fun stuff. Day two. Uh, they're calling for rain. A little more rain. A little heavier rain. A little heavier rain. We had heavy rain. It was light rain for a minute. Now it's heavy rain again. We got to go by the track, take a picture. They called it for the day. And then we got to get to Indy. So, 100, 130 some miles in basically rain. There's no choice. There's no waiting it out. Like, we got to go in the rain. Took the parachutes off to keep them dry. Took the wheelie bars off just just in case obviously we got stuck in the driveway last night so get those off it makes everything a little more maneuverable um maybe too in a dicey situation it's probably better not to have the wheelie bars on there i really hope to avoid that um that's it i mean we got we got treaded dot tires but they're racing tires so they have little to no tread they're four years old um They've been on the dyno, they've been on the track, so they don't have a lot of meat left. Pumping up the air pressure pretty high to cup the tires so that our contact path is path patch is less, so that hopefully that helps to run the water away from the inside of the tire. Helps us go, but I mean no matter what, it's a slow go. I mean you're putting a, you're putting a uh, on the edge race car on the street in the rain. There's there's pictures of it. It was obvious. It was on the cover of Hot Rod a few years back during Drag Week, and we we're running in the hurricane. So we've been in the rain before. Didn't really want to do it again, but here we are. So you do what you got to do. So thanks for watching, guys. Because I mean, you got these tur turbos are open, all the headers, and you think it's going to make so much steam under here that it just steams over the Fog. hood, fogs up the hood because the the hood just forces it all back. So I think we're gonna be better off. We've, we've always driven it in the rain with no hood on it, so. Well, and really you got all the aerodynamicals here, so it's like a pickup bed. Once you're moving in the rain. Fast enough, it, it should, should just go over it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. That's cool. Us, however, it's a brick. That's a brick. I think we're catching all the raindrops. Yeah. Well, there's some raindrops in this, that probably won't hit the back window. <laughs> That'd be about it. I said we're about to embark on an amazing adventure. Not my favorite days. Five minutes done, <laughs> or was that 10 minutes? Either way, that was about six miles done. So we still got about, uh, I don't know, 120, 130 to go. So we'll see, just one of those days. So far, so good.
to take a break for a minute. <laughs> Stress. I feel like I went a thousand miles on black ice. It gets a little dicey out there for sure. You have, uh, you can't see crap because the windshield is, you can't go fast enough to blow any of the water off the windshield. So it's just looking through beads. And then, uh, quite honestly, it, about the beginning of the trip, I think he was probably doing, I don't know, 50, 55 miles an hour or so. And it just went whoosh. I mean, enough so that, I mean, a good butt puckering moment because it was like, whoop. We both looked at each other and then slowed right down. I think we're probably going like 40 miles an hour now on the highway. But I think this is one of those years that every year we probably think about it. That we've got to just get, you know, like the, the big gnarly looking uh, uh, Dixie pack or whatever, gnarly mud tire that like Jason Sack has on his car or some other cars. Because this slick deal or even, a you know, a DOT uh, street tire suck. <laughs> they just suck. So... It's a little hairy out there, but we'll make it. It looks like we're going to drive into some worse weather. So Tom's taking a break because it's uh, probably all nervous about stuff. So anyways, that's about it. a certain level of idiot not to learn his lessons over the years and put freaking snow tires on the back but I guess I'm that idiot so slow go slow roll sketchy around that bend there yeah yeah five minutes into the drive I had doubts that we would make it so but here we are Indy John Forrest we're in Indy this was our checkpoint today for Midwest Drags we are here and actually got the dairy cooked it up through peak that we get the VIP tour of John's shop so we're in there getting ready to start the tour see everything that's going on in here and I think we get to see everything, but we can only show you some of the stuff. So stay tuned. Let's see what we see. Pretty cool stuff. So getting a private tour of John Force's place. Lots of classic stuff around. So lots of new stuff. Just lots of stuff. Are you always all suited up like this, just ready to go? <laughs> Four days I ruined her weekend, the kids and her. Everybody stayed here to help me. He did all weekend. Look at stuff on Facebook. There was a bunch of teams that came in here with mufflers off and hauling tires on their roof. And I'm like, I thought it was your group. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get fitted for a car? I don't know. Do I need to get fitted? <laughs> <laughs> At my age, somebody needs to get fitted. <laughs> you should actually take, if you have time, take a peek. His car is here. It's run six seconds. Uh, it's a full blown street car. Probably Let's go take a look at it. Can I go right, right now? Together, right? Let me go right now so I can get back to them. I can say that. Hi, is it still raining? It's pretty cool. I told you I'd be out here. <laughs> we really want to build a street car with a funny car. Cover on it, you can pick up. Motor in the back. What do you think about the turbos out of the hood yeah. like that? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> the only question I got is this. Hot. Hot. Oh. Still hot. hot. Hey, I can tell you when it's hot. <laughs> we learned something just now, didn't we? Uh, as long as it's got uh, peak antifreeze and cooling so I don't get fired here. <laughs> yeah. Or blue death in the trucks. <laughs> yeah, I saw a couple of the trailers go by. Hey, Henry J, I, that was my first race car. I and mean, I had 55 Chevys, but I had a Henry J 100 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Big old injector sticking out of the hood. I ain't gonna go back to work. I'm gonna get in trouble. Huh? Have you done much with turbos? No. No. Okay. And they shoot that stuff up in the air, huh? Oh yeah, man. We got our wastegate. I've seen that up. at the race. Scares the shit out of me when I go by them. <laughs> Lindbergh shop. He's letting us use some space so that we can get some tune-up stuff done, and basically take care of whatever, some issues and move on. So he's busy at work and you can't stop him because he's like the mad Swede. So like he doesn't stop until the day's over. And the day's not over until probably 2 a.m. Starts again at 7. So he keeps it going. He eats, he sleeps, he does everything right here. So we can't talk to him much because might, he's always too busy. I might be last minute Lindbergh too. So, That's oh. a nickname I have. So. There you go. Maybe it's last minute Lindbergh. So. And he has to have this done. He said this is going to be a running car tomorrow. No. So. It's uh, not really. Oh. Maybe three days from now. So. But. Either way, we appreciate that we get to come hang out. It's, it's, it's good having you. So. But I feel bad not being a better host. Oh. I'm usually a good host. Too, he's always a good host. Yeah. But now I'm busy. I'm busy now. So. Yeah, but yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little shy. You know, when there's too much people in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> he went to his office a little bit ago, and not just that office. He went to a different office just so he could have time to think. So, because there was too many people talking, it bothered him. So, either way, we appreciate being here. We appreciate Johnny. Uh, we got weld up a header. I mean, a couple minor things, but mostly inside parking and what better place to go than late. Johnny shop and a welder and a welder. He has a welder. It's not raining inside. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Should be good. And just for us, he actually pulled his rig outside. I haven't even seen that rig outside in a long time. So check the oil filter and make sure you don't have any uh, issues. Might have a because it's got oil, oil, lower oil pressure than what it's had before. So I just want to verify what's going on. So we got time, we got to fix that header and take that off. So I'm going to do this. Maybe if the filter looks a little dirty, then I might just take the pan off and make sure everything's all cool. If the filter looks like a million bucks, I'm not going to do nothing. So. What's what you you asked what the problem was? 
I still say that it's mostly the driver. Uh, most engine builders or chassis guys will always tell you that's the driver's problem. But anyways, the uh, I only found one rod bearing that was just questionable, and it's only questionable on the cap portion, not on the rod portion. And the problem with this whole deal is that um, the time doesn't put the car into free neutral on, and the shutting down. So, and it has a regular wet sump oil pan on it, which is a single pickup uh, external pump. So it has to pick up from the pan. So all the oil's in the pan. So when all the oil's in the pan, you hit the parachutes and the engine's going at 8,000 RPM, going all the way down. It has no oil pressure because all the oil goes to the front of the motor. And instead of putting it in free neutral, just letting the motor boom, you know, shut down. Uh, so it's kind of a two-fold deal. So I think that's pro that's obviously what's hurting the cat portion of the bearing and only one bearing and uh, If we didn't have a bearing I just would polish it up and put it back in but we got bearings here Tom went and picked some up uh, So then the other thing I'm doing is uh, it is slightly lower on oil pressure than it was um, uh, Last time I ran this cars in 2018 uh, Or did any paying attention to it outside time jerking around driving around the street and stuff um, so I'm I think that uh, I don't know if the bypass was stuck. It wasn't stuck when I tore it apart, but I'm going to add some shim into there because it's just, it, it, some of it isn't making sense on the oil pressure uh, being a little bit low. So I'm just adding some shim onto the uh, uh, bypass to uh, get a little more pressure. Uh, I'm not worried about it making excessive pressure because I don't think it will. Um, and then uh, just gonna make time, i.e. the driver fixes uh, issue with he's just gonna have to put it free neutral because or, or it's gonna keep hurting the cap portion of the rod so that's what we're doing I'm gonna get ready and put this thing back on all right Wednesday end of the day um, we were at Edgewater this morning we drove there last night we hit rain overnight and then this morning so they canceled everything we had to show up to the track as you seen, we showed up there, we did our check-in, and then we made our drive. Like, uh, I definitely hate making the drive in the rain, um, but that is what the stuff is. I mean, everything's about the drive. Um, I would be the idiot that has not bought snow tires to go on the big rims so that I could drive better in it. So we spent a lot of the day on the expressway doing 40, 45 miles an hour. We spent a lot of time going faster than that too. And I've learned a lot about pavement and how pavement acts with slicks. And I mean, there's a lot I can teach you about that, but it's stuff that you shouldn't have to learn because you should be smart enough to get tires that actually are suitable for the weather conditions because the rest of everything is fine for it. Um, but either way, we're in Indy. We got to go to John Force's shop, got to hang out there. Actually, we're wrapping up the day. We're here at Johnny Lindbergh's shop. So, the flying Swede, I don't even know what they call him, but he's just a bad, a bad dude that drives a bad car and builds crazy funny cars. So, with that, we're doing a little maintenance on the car. We're gonna wrap that stuff up and then hopefully the rain holds off in the morning. They're calling for rain again and we actually get to race tomorrow at Indy. So, that is our goal. Two runs in Indy, then we gotta make the drive back to Norwalk and we wrap everything up at Norwalk. So, so far so good. Everything's going good. We've had minor issues, but I guess we call that maintenance and we'll be on to tomorrow. So, there you have it. Please like and subscribe.